What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is Hawk Talk on Melrose, second episode of the week. We're recording this on Wednesday night, a few nights before Iowa takes on Rutgers inside Kinnick Stadium for the third to last regular season game, which is hard to believe that the season is winding down and that we are already in almost the middle of November. So what is going on, Tyler? How was your day? How was uh, how's your week been? Uh, it's been going by fast for me, I'm sure for you as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been busy at work and it makes for a for a fast week and we're already at when we're already here recording the pod on Wednesday night and yeah, you kind of touched on it before. It's like the season's really coming to a close and we talked about it on the last episode where it's our last home game for me and you um because we're not going to the Illinois game. So it's it's bittersweet because it's like you know, obviously I love the tailgating. I love going to the games and stuff like that, but um at the same time it's like yeah, I you know with, with with this offense sometimes it's it's like well it sometimes is a little tough to watch but obviously i wouldn't not go to the game i mean it's it's too much fun so yeah exactly everything everything about the game itself sometimes sucks but the tailgating just being with people i mean it, yeah it's always a, it's always a, a blast so yeah. what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little uh the nick brooks situation him decommitting uh, we'll get into um, kind of the last, and I have a spreadsheet that I'm going to share, uh, and people watching on YouTube is going to be able to see this. If not, we'll do our best job explaining kind of the 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 race to to win the West. I have just some scenarios um, in the West. Obviously, it's horrible, so it's not really saying much if we do win. But obviously, at the end of the day, like I don't care if we're going to get blown out. Like I want to make it to the Big Ten Championship game because it's like, why would you not? So we'll talk a little about about that. We'll get into the Iowa Rutgers game a little bit. And then I do want to briefly go over next year's schedule because they came out with the dates. They came out with the times. And I just have some notes on that as well. So uh, kind of a jam-packed episode, but we'll try to keep it as short as possible for all you guys out there. So let's get right into it. Nick Brooks, uh, offense alignment, 2025 class. He committed the day before the Iowa State game. It was kind of... Uh, a feel good, like let's like just a good weekend to, to kick yeah. off Cyhawk week with that huge commit. Uh, he's a four star, um, top 15 uh, offensive tackle in the nation and um, just a big dude. And like you knew he was probably gonna probably start on day one, if not like within the first couple of years, he was gonna be a really good football player for us. And uh, yesterday comes out kind of out of the blue. He decommitted, and now we see like Colorado is knocking on the door, uh, Texas Tech, some of these teams that have a lot of NIL, and you probably wonder if that was probably the big thing. I don't know. It's just for me, it sucks because it starts at the offensive line. You know, we we keep talking about like improving this offense, and the only way we're going to improve is at the start start of the offensive line, and offensive line play has not been good for us. Well, when you keep losing players like him, we lose. Um, can't even think of his name last year. Uh, didn't didn't come to Kane Iowa. Proctor. Yeah, Caden Proctor went to Alabama. Like you start losing these guys that like you should be getting or that literally commit to you, and then you lose them. Um, it really sucks because it starts at the offensive line, especially at a place like Iowa. And so this is a massive uh, decommit and. Yeah. You know, you never know. Maybe, maybe he'll end up committing back to Iowa, but I, I highly doubt it. Usually, when you commit somewhere and yeah. you de- decommit, but then commit, I mean, it's just usually it's a lost cause at that point. So, yeah, just that's kind of my my initial reaction to that. Yeah, I kind of have the same thoughts as you, Colin. I, it we we've kind of talked about how really inconsistent this offensive line's been for quite some time now and that dating back to not just this year, but last year and, and kind of the year before a little bit, it's like, yeah, it, it, it starts with the offensive line. Everything is predicated on good line play. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious and man, back, like, I feel like we were like, I was known for producing good linemen and I just feel like that has not been the case. Well, part of the problem is, yeah, when you've got highly talented guys that are committed to you and then they decommit for, you know, whatever reason, I mean, that, that has a lot to do with it. Um, you just mentioned five-star Caden Proctor, four-star Nick Brooks. Now, eh, I mean, yeah. Imagine, imagine like next year, those two guys, like on our offensive line, like that's huge. And well, for you know, Brooks, it would be, it'd be the year after 
Because oh, yeah, class 2025. But yeah. yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, but yeah, just like you 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 lose those talented guys. And and Iowa's not necessarily going to get the most talented people out there. I think me and you kind of accept that as Iowa fans, but when you've yep. got them, they're committed. You got to do everything you can to to try to keep them. And I think it's a microcosm of a bigger issue, which is the offense as a whole. The offensive line hasn't been very good. Why do highly talented offensive linemen want to come to Iowa? I mean, to to not really be able to run block for guys, not be able to pass block. I mean, our offense isn't good right now. And, you know, did, did that have something to do with it? Like you said, does the NIL play a factor? I'm sure it all does. Um, I, I didn't see, did he necessarily give a reason? I didn't really see one, but. No, he didn't. Yeah, but so, I'm guessing it's probably it's probably a little bit with money nil, a little bit with just yeah the the state of the offense. Probably a little bit has to do with the uncertainty of who's the new offensive coordinator. Is Kirk going to be around by 2025? I'm sure that has a little bit to do with it. There's probably a mix of factors, mix of factors, but regardless, yeah. it still sucks. I mean, you go yeah, back to, to it, for sure. You go back to like. 2017, 2018, 2019, and and they're all and you know we go back and you look at like we actually were putting up decent amount of points. It wasn't great, but like we were at least putting up 30 points, 40 points once in a while. Well, we had guys like Tristan Wirfs, we had guys like Larry Jackson, right? Like we had good offensive line. It starts up there. We haven't had that that play the last how many years? And this year it was it's been even you know just kind of like the last couple years. It's been better this year compared to like 2021, 2022, but it's still not yeah. great. Right, and then the center that I'm blanking out on went to the Ravens, I think. What's his name? Uh, Linderbaum. Yeah, like he yeah, was really good. Like, we at least had one guy where we could be like, like, yeah, we, we can count on him to kind of stabilize things for at least a little bit with the offensive line. Yeah. And then you can kind of adjust around them. But we don't even have that one guy right now, I feel like, to even be able to do that, which is a exactly why we, we aren't very good, for sure. Yeah, it, it it really it it definitely sucks, and you know it's just kind of like and I, I tweeted this yesterday. It should be a wake up call. Two years in a row of this should be a wake up call to Kirk and Co. Hundred percent. That it's like, and it's not just the offensive line. It's receivers losing receivers, right? Um, who knows who we will lose this year? I mean, like I, I'm convinced Caleb Johnson's gonna walk out. I mean, after you know him not playing at all this last game, and then um, you know someone asked Kirk yesterday at the presser, and his answer was kind of. Like, you know, we'll see. Um, it just depends on, you know, who's having the better practice. He said something along those lines. It's just like, what? Like, what is going on? So, like, how many guys are we going to lose this? I don't know. It should just be a wake-up call. Like, hey, you're not doing the job on offense. Like, figure something out. Do yeah. something different. Yep. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll just – it's going to be interesting come December um, when the transfer portal opens, like how many guys leave. And then also like, I know last year we did a really good job in the transfer portal, getting guys to come, but will we be able to do that again? Um, I think it all depends on who we bring in as OC. And if Kirk actually brings in somebody good, then maybe yeah. we will be able to keep some of these guys or at least go out and get some guys. So I guess we'll, well just that, really quick. And that's why it's important when they do, you know, that, that and they're probably already starting that search, but that they kind of get that done as quickly as possible so that the recruits know, and you know, yep. that they have some sort of clarity going in and knowing and, what they're going to get. Right. So, yep, exactly. All right, let's move to the next topic. I'm going to share my screen for people watching on YouTube. If not, like I said, we'll do the best job. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I, what I did was I had the big 10 West standings and what I highlighted in blue is kind of what I think, and this is pretty obvious, like kind of the the contenders to win the West. I think Illinois, Northwestern, Purdue, they're all at four or five losses. Like they're yeah. they're not going to be contenders. I mean, there's only three games left. So I highlighted the four blue. And then what I did down here was I went through each team of these teams in the blue, not the entire, you know, Big Ten West. And what I kind of think is like the likely scenario. And then also like maybe the other scenarios so like Minnesota. Um, they have three games left. I, I keep saying it. I do not think Minnesota is a very good football team. They play at Purdue, at Ohio State, Wisconsin. I think they go one and two. You could make the case, like, I, I mean, even though Purdue sucks, like, they, I could see them going on the road and losing them. But one and two, yeah. I think another scenario is, like, maybe two and one, where, like, maybe they win 
at home against Wisconsin in the year, but I think one and two is like the likeliest scenario for them. So they would finish like four and five, six and six. Wisconsin, now they play like shit against Indiana. And after you lose to Indiana, like you you probably think right. like, yeah, this team is how many more games are they going to win? But they should be getting back Braylon Allen. They should be getting back Tanner Mordecai at some point. And I still think like they are good enough to beat like Northwestern at home, good enough to beat Nebraska at home. And then that Minnesota game is kind of a toss up, but I have them like they could probably finish the year off going three and zero, especially if they get Braylon Allen back, which would end up being six and three in Big Ten play. And then Nebraska, like I have like two and one, Maryland, and unfortunately maybe Iowa. Um, other scenario would probably be like one and two, which would probably be like a loss to Iowa. But if that's the case, they'd go finish like five and four in the Big Ten. And then Iowa, and I said this on the last episode, I I do think we're going to lose one of the next two games at home. I I just I just have that feeling with our offense. Um, and then possibly losing at Nebraska, which would we would finish one and two to end of the year. Um, or the other scenario, two and one, which wouldn't be bad. Um, and that would be like winning one of the next two games, and then at Nebraska. Oh, that, right. So if that, what my scenario, my likely scenario, what I think if if this would happen, Wisconsin mm-hmm. would actually end up winning the West at six and three, and we would be five and four in the big 10 um, or the other scenario, which I'm hoping this happens, but I would win the West by going six and three. So essentially I still think Iowa can afford to lose one more game, but if they, if they lose two more games, I, I I don't think they'll make it. They can afford to lose one more, just given some of these teams and, you know, they like Wisconsin, for example, right now they are, three and three we're four and two plus we have the head to head so right essentially right. it's like they it's like them having four losses right now for us right yeah. and minnesota south play ohio state and you know so that's four so we can afford to lose one more so i really think like if we go two and one we're in it if we yeah. go one and two which i i'm really definitely afraid we will like and i'm not just saying that and I hope I'm dead wrong. It's not me. Like if it does happen, like, yep, he told you. Like, I hope I'm dead wrong when I say that. I just feel like with this offense, like one of these next two games we are dropping. I just, I, I don't know why I feel so confident in that. I hate saying that, but it just, you know, both of these two games, it's going to be a low scoring affair. And just one of them, is just not going to go our way. There's just going to be something stupid that happens. And we just lose by three or seven points. So um, what are your thoughts on all this? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to say. It's frustrating listening to you say that because I tend to agree with you a little bit. It's like, (laughs) yeah, it's like we are way better than Rutgers in Illinois on paper. But then when you start looking at it, it's like, well, no, every game's a one possession game. It doesn't matter if we're playing Rutgers, Illinois, or like we just played Northwestern. We literally escaped with a win against Northwestern. I, I Exactly. I need to repeat that. It's like, this wasn't, yes, our defense and special teams, well, besides, I guess Tori wasn't very good, but our defense was amazing. But it doesn't matter when you can't do anything on offense. So I agree with you. I think you got, I mean, if you tell me right now we, we beat Rutgers in Illinois, I agree with you. I think we're in the Big Ten Championship. Um, yeah, even if we lose in Nebraska right. end of the year. Because I I pick and I actually and this was before I knew how bad our offense was going to get this year. I actually had Iowa losing at Nebraska just like when we did our preseason stuff. Like just to start I, the year, yeah, yeah. I mean, like they have a good, they have a pretty good offense. Well, I thought they were going to, and then their defense is actually not horrible. Um, yeah, so, their yeah, their defense is good. Yeah, that's going to so, be a low scoring game. <laughs> it will be, and and that's the thing. It's like. When you when you're talking low scoring game, when you're talking one possession game, it really goes either way, right? And so, I don't know. I just I you hope that the offense can find something these next couple of games because you you can get these two at home. Then I think you're in, but it's just hard to say right now. We yeah. we we're not good on offense, so I think a likely scenario is is probably one and two right now. If I had to make a prediction as well. Um, but I think at the end of the day, like long story short, I think it's going to come down to Iowa, Wisconsin. I think those are kind of the two teams. Yeah. I think Wisconsin's still in it because they're scheduled the rest of the year. I mean, it's a right. joke. If you think they're about it, Northwestern at home, Nebraska at home in Nebraska, when you talk Nebraska, yes, their defense is good, but their offense is horrible this year. I mean, cause they, they're like Iowa, they have so many injuries. 
on yeah. the offensive side. Um, they lost so many guys, and then they, you know, their quarterback didn't pan out, so they they're on to their other quarterback, and they lost two other running backs out for the year. They lost one of the receivers yeah. out for the year. Like, holy cow! Um, two other offensive linemen are are hurt. So, dude, that's why that Minnesota game was so annoying the way that it ended oh yeah exactly you we win that like, game you're you 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 take the punt return off the board like you 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 went off that i mean this is a different conversation yes. right now well, right and and i forgot to mention this like and i sent this to you last night i was amazed that we are ranked 22 in the college football playoff and austin yeah. made a good point he said dude if we would have just beat minnesota we'd probably be like 12 or 13 right now because we'd be seven or we'd be eight and one i was gonna say i bet we're Top, definitely top, top 15 20, but but yeah probably top 15. i mean if we're 22 right now yeah, at seven true. and two with a true. with a bad loss to minnesota at with home bad, like yeah, you win that game point. we're probably top 15 for sure that's which is point. just crazy like, i that i was like crazy. and they said i saw a tweet that like the re, like the reasoning of why iowa is where they're at and they're like kind of like what you keep saying or what you know everyone keeps saying is like you know we gotta give like this elite defense some credit and that's kind of what the head of the college football playoff committee said was like, yes, the offense is struggling and bad, but like the other two phases of the game are like really good. And it's like, you're kind of like yeah. giving them like, you know, they're like, you're, you're they're deserved credit, of, right? yeah, yeah. of what yeah. they're doing. So yeah. I thought that was, yeah, I was just very surprised by that. I did not think we'd be right, but here we are. And not only like, I thought if we would be like 25, I was just like, but right. someone also made a good point here. Every time I feel like we get ranked, we lose the following week. It's like we get those those numbers next to our our name, and we end up losing, and that's what kind of sucks. Okay. So let's get into this game a little bit. Yeah. Um, Rutgers, kind of a unique team, like because we don't play them very often. Boy, if you would have just looked at the box score of their game against Ohio State, but didn't look at the score, you would you would have thought that they would have won that game. Um, they had twenty three first downs to. Ohio State's 15. They only gave up 15 first downs to Ohio State's offense. Total yards, they had 361. They held Ohio State to 328, which is really good. Uh, Rushing yards, they held Ohio State to 139, and they had 232 rushing yards. So if you would have seen that, you would have been like, how the hell did they lose this game? And there was a point which I didn't realize this. So they were up nine to seven Rutgers was, and they were about ready to score. This was in the third quarter. So the score literally after in the third quarter was nine to seven. Yeah. They were holding Ohio state to seven points. They were winning at halftime. Yeah. Think about like, okay, if they're holding Ohio state, a good offense. Right. I I can't even like, how are we even going to be able to score? But anyway, so they, they held them in the third quarter. It was nine to seven. Rutgers was driving. They were at the 20 yard line. If they would have scored, they would have got up like four, you know, four or no, what would be. Hmm. Uh, sixteen to seven. Yeah. But what happened? And I don't know if you saw that. Oh yeah, ninety three yard pick six. Off and that hit like it was it was crazy. Like changed the whole game. Obviously, it changed the entire yeah. game. And after that, it was just like they kind of yeah. And the final score, that, yeah, final score was thirty five sixteen. You take away that pick six, it was like twenty eight sixteen. So Ohio or Rutgers held his own. I mean, they they did a really good job. <laughs> you look at their their schedule and kind of you know they went three zero non conference. Um, yeah. they beat Northwestern pretty handily, a team that we struggled against. Um, uh, you know, they lost at Michigan, but Michigan's just another beast. They should have lost to Michigan State at home. That was probably their worst game of the season. Michigan State's obviously not very good. They were down 24 to 6, and they came back and won 26-24 or 27-24. Um, they beat Indiana 31-14. So I mean, like not a bad team. And this is what, what scares me. They're, they're definitely better than Minnesota. They're definitely better than Northwestern. And I just think like, if we want to win this game, like there's areas of the game, like Deacon Hill you can't turn the ball over, man, you turn the ball over against them. Like we're probably going to lose. And just like we say at every game, we're going to have to hope uh special teams or defense gets some sort of points. Yeah. That are a short field again. <laughs> I mean, right. Like that's, yeah how we scored our touchdown against Northwestern off a block punt, got a short field and capitalized. Um, yeah, hundred percent agree with you. I mean, Rutgers, like, I think they're kind of getting to that tough part of their schedule now where, you know, and, and, and my thing is the the thing that I like is they just played an emotional game against Ohio state, right. Had that yes. lead. Um, obviously like you highlighted the pick that was a touch that re- they returned for a touchdown Ohio state. 
very demoralizing, kind of changed that whole outcome of the game. How are they feeling coming into this week? Um, I would be way more nervous if they just came off a win against Ohio State, I can tell you that. Uh, so, you know, I think that's probably maybe took a lot out of them. Iowa, we're going to have to, like you said, we're going to have to play queen football. Deacon Hill, if if anything, please, for the love of God, don't turn the ball over. I just can't count on that. He does every game, Colin. If, if there's a good bet to do, obviously taking the yes. under of every game, but then <laughs> may, like either like interception fumble player prop for Deacon Hill because it's like it's almost a given it's going to happen, unfortunately. God, can't even hold on to it. They're, he's yeah. just going to get swatted out of his hands right like as of late. So, no, I, I that's that's – you make an excellent point. I mean, that, that could, that very well could be the game. So playing queen football and, you know, doing just enough, I guess, on offense again, like, I don't I just know. don't know how we score. I don't either. Cause I think Rutgers defense is really good. And they actually have a really good running back that Manung guy or however you pronounce his last name. Yeah. He's actually a pretty, he's actually a stud. Um, I, I'm not too worried about their Lindsay. offense doing much, yeah. but yeah. I mean, you never know. I mean, they might break a run. They might. I, I just think our defense is playing at such a high level right now that, like, right. I'm not too worried. But you know, there's going to be a couple drives every game, just like it happens because our offense sucks so much, and we just they're on the field for so much. Like, you know, there's going to be a few drives where well, they actually go down the field. You know, it's it just happens very every time. sad for this to come out of my mouth, but I'm not worried about their offense. I'm just worried that they might score like ten points, and that's too much. That's too so, much, like, yeah. that's that's the predicament that I'm in. If so, they score twice, they score two touchdowns. I don't know how we get over 14 points. I re- I'll be honest. I don't see that. Yeah. My prediction real quick, I'm going to say Iowa pulls out a, pulls out another late game win, 13 to 10. It's at home. I think we're a one and a half point favorite. When yeah, I saw, I believe last. so. I should look right now while you're talking. 13 might be too much to be honest with you, but I'll say we get 13. I'll say our defense comes up with a, with a play late. To, to stop them and and we seal the game for us 13 10 yeah i was a one point favorite 20 and a half <laughs> uh Jesus. so someone made a good just point just getting lower every week S- someone said something on twitter or something they're like honestly i'm kind of like i like as much as like i don't want this to happen i almost kind of want to get down like 10 to 0 and just see, because it seems like lately we we get up and then we just we're on cruise control and we just we don't even do anything. And it's like this is so boring. But if you get down, if you're we're forced tied or have the lead. We are ultra conservative. Yes. Sure. And if you're down by multiple yeah, possessions or whatever, you're forced to actually try to attack and and try you know, to be what, aggressive. And I said that on the last episode. I said. Why did it take for that last possession, of course, because we're tied for yep, us to cause... actually move down the field and, and complete a 23-yard pass to Caleb Brown, his yeah, first of the it's... season. It, it, you're right. Maybe maybe I would never wish that, <laughs> but it's like maybe that's what it takes. I don't know. I don't know. I have uh, – I actually had – I wrote this down, loaded it before you said it, 13 to 10 as well, which is taking the easy way out because I'm pretty sure the last three – games i had like 13 to 10 as like the final yeah, score <laughs> it's like that. that i mean no. i'm to the point where that's literally where every game it kind of ends up being yeah. so it's easy to say 13 to 10 or yeah. you know because that's given like me but but are we gonna score a touchdown i don't know like can um I, can i say this on the pod if if we're if we're not gonna score can we please if we win the toss just defer please please just once why receive it we we're not going to do anything with that first possession. We never do. Well, like like Joseph said, I I, I and I never even thought about this. I, I know I shared it to you, but I'm going to share it to the people listening. But I think Kirk's philosophy is he really thinks that okay, if we get the ball right away, if we just get like one first down, or even if we don't get a first down, Dory Taylor, punt it as far, and then you just start playing a field position game because if they're getting that like the uh, the ten yard line. Sure. Because if we get like that That's first, true. if we get one first down on that drive, more than likely Tory Taylor is going to punt it to probably yes. the ten yard line, or or maybe right. even you know right, right, right. closer to the end zone. And at that point, then you're starting to play the that's, field position that's game. A, so in, that in is Kirk's eyes, that's a win for him. Okay. Yes, and okay. it's also obviously a win if if just right, for right. some you could go down the field. But I really think that is that is why they do that. Um, and think about it. 
Northwestern game, remember the first drive? We actually went down the field. We elected not to kick a field goal. We punted the football when we could have kicked a field goal because it was at the same spot, but we decided to punt because Kirk knew, okay, hey, we punt now. We pin them deep, and now we're just going to play the field position game for the entire rest of the half or quarter. Is the only way I think yeah that 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 it actually makes sense and i think you're exactly right i think that's a give credit to joseph for that for that thing because i never really thought even i i could not wrap my head around why we do that and i love how the announcers were trying to say like oh yeah. they did it because they, you know they, they, to you prove know, a message just, it's like no they've been doing it forever that's a statement that you know they i really believe after all the controversy that they're coming out and they're gonna make us it's like stop no. we do this all the time yeah yeah Clearly, they, they clearly they didn't do their homework on that. <laughs> yeah. But no, it. Um, I mean, it's so a big game for Iowa. 10. Yeah, thirteen um, to ten. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think you got. Well, you have to for sure win one of the two home games minimum to have a shot, right? I think yeah. at this point, and you're exactly so, right. This is a huge game. Huge I, game. I I said we're going to lose one of the next two. I, I'm still like, I don't really know if it's going to be Rutgers or if it's going to be Illinois. I'm just going to go Illinois just because like Brett Bielema, like I just, I'm a little bit more worried about like him, even though I think Rutgers is probably the better team than Illinois. Uh, it just seems like Bielema, like, I don't know, back when he was at Wisconsin, like just, yeah, you know, he has the Iowa tattoo, Kinda right? Knows, like, he, yeah. yeah, he, he knows how he's kind of like Pat Fitzgerald. Like he wants that, that win. Kind of he wants that game. And like, you know, they're going to yeah. be really physical. Illinois is going to be really yeah. physical. And that game, like I could see us definitely losing. So I'm going to go more of like, I'm leaning more towards like that being the loss and then uh, yeah. getting the dub this weekend. So weather wise looks great. 52 degrees. Cannot complain for November Crazy. 11th. Crazy. Like <laughs> that is as good of weather as you could ask for, for is November 11th. Warmest? like game this late in the season that you can remember it might be i remember two years ago it was like this weekend because it was like the second week in november when i came up to uh waterloo and remember we we went out and then yeah. the next day we went to iowa minnesota game and cody was with us i remember how cold that game was because i brought like hand warmers and jacket like a huge jacket i remember yeah. it being really cold that day and like this one it's gonna be like crew neck and jeans so yep, really looking yep. forward to that so all right one last thing before we get off i want to share um my screen one more time for people on youtube if you're not watching on youtube uh, i apologize um the schedule for next year because it came out with the times now i did not realize this until like last week but um we have two buys next week or next year which yeah, is which is great that. and yeah. every team has two buys because next year thanksgiving is like later in the year. Right, it's like right. November 28th compared to like this year, November 23rd. So there's that extra week. So essentially, yeah, you're going to have that extra week, which is going to be a buy because you're not going to play 13 games. They're going to stay at 12. Um, so for me, like, okay, so like the, the non-conference, we should go 3-0. Now, once again, this is all like, yeah. we don't know what the roster makeup is going to be or even like these teams, but just – Initial thought. Initial so should right go three and zero. Iowa State will probably be better next year. They're going to be returning. I mean, they're so young this year. They'll have Rocco back. You know, this will be going into Kinnick. This will be like his fourteenth game start. So like he's going to have experience. Like they're going to be decent. But we should go three and zero at Minnesota. Man, like if we would have won again this year, I would have been like, okay, one of these years we're losing. But I think this is going to be a revenge game. Any person that is going to be still on the team, hopefully Cooper's gene is is coming back next year. This will be a game that they are going to want because um, just kind of the way that game ended and about how PJ Fleck was such a douche after that game. Like, um, <laughs> I really think like this is going to be that revenge game, and I think we're going to go into uh, Minneapolis and win that game. So we're setting up uh, a good like qu- first quarter of the year, and then I love where the buy is. Like, okay, you play four games, we're going to be kind of hurt. Like, let's get a bye week in there. Um, at Ohio State, that's a, that's an automatic loss. Like, I just it's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's like the Penn State game this year. You you hope and pray that we can we can compete. Yeah, right. Um, but that's more than likely a loss. Now Saturday, October twelfth, man. Like I circled this, this because if we're like four and one, this is a massive game inside Kinnick. Not only because it's a kind of a unique opponent, Pac twelve team, right? Coming to Kinnick, it's gonna be a hopefully a beautiful fall day. Like this game is going to feel huge inside Kinnick probably will be a night game or it's kind or of an it's afternoon that, game. Like, Penn State kind yes. Of atmosphere like feel to it for sure. Yep. And that if you're four, four and one man, like, yeah, 
seem like it's gonna it's gonna be awesome. And um, who knows like what will happen, but I'm not gonna say win or loss now, but that's just gonna be a big game. And then you play at Michigan State. Now, Michigan State, big question for them is who's their next head coach and whoever their next head coach is, like it's gonna take just like every other program, it usually takes one or two years, right? So like yeah. We kind of have them at a good spot. Now we have to go on the road, but like, you know, it's not a, unless they bring in some really, really good head coach and they, you know, bring in a bunch of transfers and they're actually a lot better. Um, that game doesn't worry me that much. Northwestern at home. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take a big 10 West team, uh, Wisconsin yeah. at home, um, which they're going to be obviously better with fickle, but we're at home but we're at and home. then. At right. UCLA, which is probably out of all the Pac-12 teams, probably the easiest team, right? You're gonna the have to face. One that yep, that are joining that to play for sure. Then I love where this on the road. Yep. yep, I love where this second buy is because think about if there wasn't a buy at UCLA West Coast at Maryland yeah. East Coast, that'd be way too much traveling. So we get that right. bye week to kind of finish off the year at Maryland. What's one thing with Maryland? As the year goes on, they start sucking. So honestly, <laughs> playing them on November 23rd is probably a good thing versus playing them like week four. Yeah. And then you get Nebraska at home. So honestly, like looking at the schedule, like, yes, you at Ohio State, really tough. You know, UCLA, yeah. it's just going to be tough because it's going to be like on the road, a place that you never really play at. But like, it's really not. Too, it could have been. It could have been a lot harder. Actually, about, right? Yeah. You get right. four Big Ten West teams, yeah. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Northwestern. At Michigan State, at Maryland, probably the two not hardest East teams that you would normally, yeah. you know. So what I'm saying middle, is like middle of the middle tier East teams, right? yeah, or, or less, it's right? Definitely a manageable schedule outside of that back to back at Ohio State, Washington at home. But at least yeah. you get Washington at home. I mean, look at our home schedule next year, man. Like Iowa yeah, State, Washington, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Like that is a great home get your stand. Tickets, folks. <laughs> that, that's worth it right there. No. I mean, yeah. man. Yeah, no. Look, just like you said, when you break it down that way and you really look at it, it's not out of the realm of possibility to have a good season for sure. Yeah. And again, this is all early. This is, I mean, God, yeah. we're, we're not even, we don't, the thing we don't know this how year, so we don't, we don't know. Washington is going to look next year without right. um, Penix and they're, they're a really stud wide receiver. We don't know how, Correct. You know, Maryland's going to look without their quarterback or, you know, right. Minnesota. Are they, you know, who knows if Northwestern's going to bring in some transfer quarterback that's actually really like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. it's so yeah. hard to so judge, hard but just judge. basing yeah. it off like this initial, it's like, yeah. Okay. Okay. We can work with this. Like, I and can I work like, with this. I like the, I, I'm the same with you. I really like the placement of where the two buys are. Yep. Uh, um, you get, like you said, you get that break after the court, first quarter of the season. Then you play a Hopefully tough you're four now. State team. Right. And you're exactly right. After that first month, get healthy. Get geared up for that next phase of the season. And then, like you said, at the end of the year, get a nice break as well. So, yeah, I yeah. love the two buys. That's that's awesome. Yep, for sure. And like Which I said, is, every every team's going to have two buys. It's not just us having two buys. Yeah. It's just the way the schedule operates next year with the essentially, essentially an, uh, one extra week with Thanksgiving being late. So God, the end uh, of that season, Colin, is not that difficult, really, when you look at it. Just on paper. No. Like uh, Oregon, wait, Wisconsin, UCLA, Maryland, Nebraska. I mean that it could have been a lot tougher than that, I yeah. think. Because and like I said, at UCLA, yeah. at UCLA is intimidating kind of, but like like I said, out of all the Pac twelve teams that are coming to the Big Ten, they are You're the, talking I mean, Oregon, USC, Washington, UCLA. Right. Yes. If we're playing a West Coast team on the road. I would prefer UCLA. They are of the four currently. The you know this year they're probably the worst. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I I mean and yeah you know we get out of the <clears throat> nine Big Ten games, four of them are Big Ten West opponents, teams that we are familiar with. Yeah. So can you go four and zero against those so teams? And, and that's, that's huge. another thing. We're going to nine Big Ten games, right? Well, we, we already are at nine Big Ten games okay. now because okay. we play we play six Big Ten West teams and then three crossovers. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, a lot of good matchups, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, and with the new TV Big Ten or the new ske- like TV schedule and everything, I'm sure all a lot of these games are going to be, you know, on great times again and and great windows. So, yeah, I'm excited. And honestly, like, I hate bye weeks, but like, I honestly think every year every team should have two buys. Because I mean, 
football is such a physical sport. Guys get hurt. Guys get banged up that like, I don't know, like, oh, it almost seems like one bye week is like almost not enough. And I, I think the same thing like in the, in the NFL, extend the NFL one more week and have two buys, because especially with, you know, you see all these injuries, you see guys sure. banged up, have one at the beginning of the year or like, and then have one towards more towards the end of the year. Like, I don't know why. I mean, I won't complain for having an extra week of NFL because essentially that's what it'd be. If you had two right. buys, there'd be an extra week. I don't, yeah. I wouldn't complain about that. And I just think like with how guys get just so banged up and you see so many injuries, like you, you sometimes need that off week to, to, to heal up, to get better. It is amazing that they squeeze all that into like essentially three months of football. Like it is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. It, like, I love that next year we have two buys. Now it's going to suck come those weekends when we don't play, but like, Looking back, you know, it's 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 nice to have. So, but I'm sure at that point too, we'll, you know, like when we were saying during our bye week this year, it couldn't have came out a better time, better right? Time. So, yep. I'm sure we'll be saying probably the saying the same thing next year. Yeah. So. so, well, that will do it for this episode. Um, jam packed, but we got to everything in in under forty ish minutes. So I will take that. Oh yeah. So, um, that will do it. We'll be back on Sunday, going over hopefully the win against Rutgers. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll catch you on the other side. So have a good rest of your week, Tyler. We'll talk to you later and go Hawks.